You've been working with narwhals for 20 years now. What's it like to see them in person? We have some legendary animals that people dream about, like the unicorns, for example. We have something better than unicorns. We have something that's real, and it's the novels. And we're lucky enough to still have some of them. You know, one of the things that has bothered me for years is not only do we drive uh, animals into extinction, but we, we forget that they were ever there. We forget that there used to be belugas in Long Island Sound, the Atlantic gray whale, and uh, they just sort of disappear and without any thought going to them. And this is what's happening now with many other species. They, they'll disappear and we'll forget that they were, were ever there. So the most surprising aspect of studying the narwhale is for people to really understand that this animal actually exists, that it's actually on the planet with us. What we are dealing with here is a human rights infringement. Our lives are, our life is at stake. Our culture is at stake from all the seismic cannon mapping. Seismic cannon mapping that they want to do in Baffin Bay and Davis Street, shooting air guns that are over 100,000 times louder than a jet engine. They would be blasting air gun every 15 seconds, every day, all day, all night. As we know, a deaf whale is a dead whale. Deaf narwhal is a dead narwhal because these animals rely so much on their auditory perception for survival. As a mayor, they told me, you got to do everything to stop this because it could be the end of our lives. And, you know, I felt like that too. How are we going to live? You know, like, we're going to have a land that has no whales, that has no seals or no whales. And we're desperate, you know, desperate to stop this. <laughs>